Back to collecting the elements. In this episode, I'll be collecting element number 51, antimony, which is a silver colored, somewhat dense, somewhat hard, very brittle metalloid. In nature, it's rarely found as the free element, usually found as the mineral stibnite, which was used in ancient times as a type of eyeshadow called coal. In modern times, antimony is most commonly used in flame retardant materials and specialty alloys. Some of these specialty alloys include the lead alloy used in lead acid batteries, like your car battery, pewter, which is used to make fancy tableware and decorative items, and specialty solders, such as the uh, lead-free plumbing solder that I'm going to be extracting antimony from in this video. Now the process I use in this video may look familiar. It's identical to the process I used to purify tin two years ago. I've just scaled it up a whole lot. I'm going to be refining about half a pound of solder to separate the tin from the antimony, which is going to leave me with a very small amount of antimony and almost half a pound of highly purified tin. I still got to figure out what I'm going to do with all that tin. Anyway, let me show you how I did it. So here I have some 95% tin, 5% antimony, plumbing solder. And what I'm after is the 5% antimony. So the first thing I'm going to do is melt all of this down and cast it into an electrode that will make the electrolysis process a lot easier. I think that might be enough. So into here it goes. So I can melt it down. Okay, now it's all nice and molten. See if I have something to scrape the slag off with. I'm going to pour it into the mold. Add some water, cool it faster. There we go, about half a pound of tin antimony alloy ready for electrolysis. So here's the setup for the electrolysis. I have the uh, tin antimony anode over here. I have a steel cathode over here, just a random bent up piece of steel. That's set up as the cathode, and that's where the tin is going to electroplate out. As the tin goes into solution and plates out on this end, the antimony should fall and make a pile of crud at the bottom here. So I'm going to start this with the uh, tin chloride that I had left over from my original electro refining tin video. Just going to go ahead and dump that all in here. The cathode is already fizzing like mad because electricity is going through. And after just a few seconds, that's tin already plating out. And over on the anode side, 
it's already gotten dark from uh, the tin going into solution. To move this along a little faster, I need more solution. So I'm adding a bunch of distilled water. Actually, I should add a bunch more distilled water. And I'm also going to add to this some extra hydrochloric acid. This is what's left of my solder, oil, solder alloy anode. I think it's okay to stop now. Let me shake the solution out of here. Well, put this into a jar here, or into a funnel here so it can filter out. There's a little piece of anode left here. And most of that's pretty heavily coated in antimony. Let's get my improvised pressure washing system. Start pressure washing the antimony off of the remaining piece of anode. Okay, I'm going to let the water drain out of this while I deal with the tin. That's going to reach in, grab the tin, squish it. Squeeze as much of the solution out as I can. Put this into the container where I've been collecting all the tin so far. Well, most of the tin so far. I should be more accurate about that. The rest of the tin's right here. So in a moment, I'm gonna melt all this down along with the rest of the tin. So here's the antimony after filtering. So I'm gonna scoop it all up into this little measuring spoon here. And then I'm gonna heat it up to drive the water off.
It's odd. This batch of antimony mostly coalesced into a bead. Or a blob. In here I have all the antimony that I've collected so far. This includes a couple of yeah, smallish beads. Some melty chunks of different sizes, but most of it's still this, this powdered mix of antimony and antimony oxide. So I'm going to try something a bit radical to coalesce as much of this as possible into a nice big chunk. So this here is rosin solder flux. Going to start by putting some rosin solder flux at the bottom of the test tube. And you'll probably notice the bottom of the test tube is pretty blackened, and that's from earlier attempts to get this same technique to work. That's how I got the uh, largest of the beads of antimony. And what the flux will do is help remove the oxides from the uh, smaller pieces and the powdery bits. That is the wrong lid for the solder flux. So all of that in the test tube. It looks like a lot, but most of that space is actually taken up by air. One more thing I'm going to add to the top is a little bit of charcoal. Charcoal is, again, to help get rid of oxides by converting them back to the metal. Oh, hey, I have beads of antimony stuck in my funnel. I don't want them in the funnel, I want them in the test tube. That's one that ran away. All right. Some charcoal. I'm going to pull the air out of here and replace it with helium. I told you most of the space in there is air. Okay, vacuum's been pulled. Letting the helium in. Okay, I think three flushes with helium should be enough. And the helium, of course, is impure balloon helium, which is 20% air, which means there's still about 4% oxygen in there. Hopefully that'll cause less problems than the 20% oxygen in the atmosphere. As just one more layer of precaution, I have the helium balloon attached to the top of this. That'll allow expansion space for any gases that try to escape and it'll keep the atmosphere from rushing back in when the test tube cools down. So here we go. I'm going to heat this up and hope for the best. Oh shit. I melted the glass.
Well, did the best I could to rescue this from a couple of disasters. There is some nice liquid antimony in there. I'm going to let this cool and I'm going to try to sort it out. This here is the solid antimony that I was able to recover from the kind of disaster that happened. And I want to show you what happens if you break one of these open. Little shiny crystals inside. Santimony is actually quite brittle. And when you break it, you can see the shiny, pretty crystals that haven't oxidized yet. It's not a huge sample. In fact, this is probably about half of the amount of antimony I expected to get out of the solder. But it is shiny and crystalline, and I'm going to call this good enough. So, before I seal this off, I'm filling the inside of the test tube with helium to try to prevent the antimony from oxidizing too much after it's sealed off. Now, naturally that hasn't displaced all of the air with helium, but it should be enough. So here goes. And there it is. So after 21 days of electrolysis, I finally have a small sample of pure antimony. And though the sample may be small and the yield may have been low, at least it was pure enough to have crystallized internally. So I'll, I'll count that as a win. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. If you know someone else who might enjoy it, hit the share button. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe and ring the little bell over here. And if you want to help me make more videos, throw me a few coins on Patreon or PayPal. Anyway, uh, see you next time.